Hello YouTube, Robert from Texas here, and the book I am with today is The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Schwartz. Written in 1959, and it doesn't feel like it was written in 1959. It was a good book. I had no idea that it was written such an old time ago because I felt like it was written in, in modern times. So it was a good book. And what's kind of cool about this book too is that you don't have to read it from beginning to end to get something out of it. Pick out any single chapter and you'll get something out of it. It's kind of cool. And here, I'll, I'll show you the chapters, which is something I, I like doing, so you guys kind of get a gist of what the book is about. It's chapter one. Believe you can succeed and you will. Cure yourself of excusitis, the failure disease. Build confidence and destroy fear. How to think big. How to think and dream creatively. You are what you think you are. Manage your environment, go first class. Make your attitudes your allies. Think right towards people. Get the action habit. How to turn defeat into victory. Use goals to help you grow. How to think like a leader. And the index. The end of the book. And again, each chapter, just pick one out and you'll get something out of it. And what's cool about it too is at the end of each chapter, they've got like little bullet points that goes over that previous, that, that particular chapter. So if you really want to get into the meat and bones of it, just choose one chapter you like, go to the end of the chapter, you'll get six or seven points that gives you just exactly what you need in relation to whatever that, your problem you're trying to figure out for yourself. And that's what kind of makes me think like the magic of thinking big because there's no, there's no magic. There's no mystical powers involved. You know, there's nothing really magical about this. It's tips and tricks and it's, it's, it's dependent on you taking action, on you doing things. So that would be the magic, I think. Uh, it, it's, it's you actually getting involved, trying to solve it, and this book kind of shows you things how to do it. And the, the big part, how to think big, for me it was, if you've never done anything, if you felt trapped, and you maybe thought there was no way out of whatever it is you're stuck with, the big part of this book is that it shows you a different way to look at things, a different way to process information, uh, an extra way to do something that you want to accomplish. Because maybe you've never thought about stuff like that. Maybe you've, you've always felt trapped or something. So the big part is that this shows you that there is a way, there is a way to think differently. On um, relation to how to think big, the, that one particular chapter, one of the things that it says here, oh, because it's kind of cool, a lot of the chapters also have like a little uh, uh, little uh, like a little guide of, of 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 steps that you can follow or how to think differently, so you don't ha you don't have to like read the whole book. You, you don't have to read the whole chapter. You can just kind of go to that table and, and little index and see the way a small thinker thinks and a big thinker thinks, or how to solve problems if you see something one way. So that's what's kind of cool. So in relation to again the one, that one chapter on how to think big, for instance, mm, let me see here for the future. A petty thinker, uh, someone who thinks small in regards to the future, they view the future as limited. So the future is limited. There's, there's not much to go on. As opposed to a, a big thinker, the future, they see the future as very promising. And, and so that's, that's the way a big thinker thinks. And again, maybe it's not a big thing for you, but maybe you've never even thought about it. Maybe you felt limited. You saw no way out because that's the future for you and it's already set. It's going to happen one way or another and you got no way out of it. But then you realize that that's a small person's thinking. You want to be a big thinker. Think of the future as being unlimited. Another aspect here that I can think about. Oh, mistakes. A small thinker magnifies minor errors and turns them into big issues. So that's what a small thinker does. Someone who thinks small. Little things are just turned into big things and they're just <laughs> small stuff. Small stuff, there's nothing to worry about. As opposed to a big thinker, they ignore the errors of little consequences. So they don't let little things get in their way. And I guess it's up to you to decide what's big and small as far as a consequence or a problem or, or a mistake or anything like that. But that's a difference, what a small thinker would think and how a big thinker would think, right? 
the small thinker is every little thing is going to be a big deal and it's going to get in the way and there's no use of going on. Whereas the big thinker is they've already processed the information. They see it as a, as a nonsense. Heck, I didn't get my coffee this morning with sugar in it. You know, that, that's not a way to base your day. You keep going on because it's a small deal. Some people, man, I, I know I had stories of people who don't get their coffee just the way they want it and it ruins their whole day. I have heard these things happening to people and it's ridiculous, right? And that, and that point, and that, that, that particular person who I'm thinking about, that's in their aspect, that one particular moment in their, in their lives, that was them thinking small. I'm not saying that they were a small thinker, that, but they, at that one point, they were thinking small. So that's one way to think big versus thinking small. And the whole, the whole book, each chapter has little examples like that. And it's cool. And, it, and there's not one chapter that I really liked over the other one. A lot of it was really cool. And I really enjoy going to the end of the chapter and checking out those bullet points. And that's how I do it. I, I want to reference something. You know, hey, let me, look at, let me look at that chapter again about creativity. What can I do? What can I think differently about it? And it shows you how. So it's cool. And it's not a heavy, stuffy read for being an old book. You know, a lot of times I, my, perspective, my perspective is that it's old books filled with too much information and, and it kind of weighs you down a little bit with big words and whatever. Not this book. This was kind of cool. It was kind of fun. Quick and, not quick and easy read necessarily because it, it, there's a lot of information here. But it's useful information and it's information that you can reference over and over again and you can just pinpoint the chapter that you want to get to it and it was cool. So I recommend this book, you guys. The power, the power of thinking big, the magic of thinking big. And there's no magic involved, you guys. It's just you doing action. And the big part for me was you thinking differently, seeing things in a different way. Change that perspective of yours. And this book kind of shows you how to think differently, how to see things in a different light. Yeah, I liked it a lot, you guys. Check it out, The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Schwartz. And that's it, you guys. Hope you guys are having a good day. And I'll talk to you later. See ya.